Hello viewers, welcome to the online educational channel of Geological Society of Assam. I'm Afifa Kosser and today we shall be learning about human evolution. The story of man began about 7 million years ago when we emerged from small quadruped mammals and gradually we become the dominant species on the planet. But how we became human? We shall be discussing this in this presentation. In the learning outcome, we'll be speaking about evolution, lines of scientific evidence of evolution, theory of human evolution, some of the important trend seen in human evolution, important fossils discovered so far, and finally, we shall be discussing human evolution in the light of geological time scale. Charles Darwin described evolution as descent with modification. But unlike evolution of other animals and plants, human evolution is unique because it is a combination of biological and cultural how do we define human evolution? We can call it as a process of change by which human originated from ape-like ancestors evolved over a period of approximately 7 million years. Earlier, it was thought that Homo sapiens have, may have speciated about 2000 years ago. However, recent discoveries suggests that Homo sapiens may have speciated as early as 315,000 years ago. What are the important evidences on the basis of which we have constructed or rather reconstructed our story? The primary evidences are in the form of paleontological evidence. It includes fossilized body parts such as limb bones, pelvic girdle, cranium, as well as non-biotic physical artifacts used by our extinct ancestors. The first ancient human fossil discovered was in 1891 by Eugene Divers on the banks of the Solo River in Java, Indonesia. This site later gained fame as the home of the Java man, better known today as Homo erectus. Another line of scientific evidence which is gaining ground nowadays is genetic evidence. Gene trees are being constructed using molecular markers to trace back the most recent common ancestor, which is referred to as the MRCA. Important molecular markers studied are the mitochondrial DNA, Y chromosome, nuclear, microsatellite DNA, insertion markers, etc. Large scale genome studies are now being conducted to solve many unknown answers of human history. Genetic studies conducted with mitochondrial DNA has been used to trace back our recent common ancestor to a female who lived in Africa and that mitochondria has been nomenclatured or named as mitochondrial Eve. Now we come to the theory of human evolution. There are two theories regarding this. First is the multi-regional theory. According to this theory, the members of genus Homo evolved in different regions of the earth simultaneously after an ancient ancestor moved out of Africa. The other theory, which is mostly accepted, is the out of Africa theory. According to this, Genus Homo evolved from a line of gracile Australopithecines and modern Homo sapiens arose in Africa. Thus, 
we can say that Africa is humanity's evolutionary cradle. Thus, humans are primates, and we can trace back our ancestor to a small arboreal insect eating mammal called Archonta, which lived about 65 million years ago. During the time of the great diversification of mammals after the extinction of the dinosaurs, primates diverged into 13 families. Of this, one family is known as hominidae, which is characterized by having no tail, and it includes the great apes and humans. Within the family hominidae, a tribe hominini arose, which included homo and pan, that is chimpanzees. One of the important event in human origin was the split in human and pan lineages into two separate lines, and this is assumed to have occurred about 7 million years ago. Thus, today we can say that our closest living relatives are chimpanzees. After the split, we can divide hominins into three groups. The early hominins, which are more ape-like, from which the next group, Australopithecines, evolved, and these were a mosaic of both ape-like and human-like features. And finally, the third group, Homo, arrows which included different species of the genus Homo. Before we move further, we should be clear in our concept about two terms, hominoid and hominin. The term hominoid is referred to members of the family hominoidae and it includes orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos and humans. Hominins is a closer group consisting of humans and all our immediate ancestors after the split from Pan. In the adjacent picture, we can see how this division took place. If you look into the evolutionary tree, we can see that in the first group, in the color blue, we can see members of early hominids represented by Ardipithecus, Aurorin and Selehanthropus. Selehanthropus is considered as the closest ancestor of both chimpanzee and man. From this, the Australopithecus evolved. There were several species of Australopithecus, and from them, there was two offshoot. One was a blind offshoot, which resulted in members of Paranthropus, which is not in the direct lineage of human descent. And finally, we have the other offshoot leading to the emergence of different species of Homo. Now let us see what are the important trends which guided the human evolution. One of the compelling causes of human evolution was the shift from arboreal to terrestrial life. There was a long dry period of about 12 million years, as a result of which broadleaf forests were being gradually replaced by open grasslands. As a result, more competition was on the trees and availability of food and less competition was on the ground. This resulted in the development of another important feature that is terrestrial bipedalism. One of the hormone feature of hominin is that they are habitually erect and walk only on the lower limbs. 
we can see that gradually in the evolution the great toe is aligned with the lateral toes unlike our ancestors and the lower limbs gradually became longer than the four limbs another important trend in human evolution is the increase in size and complexity of the brain the upper cranium of the skull gradually expanded permitting increase in size and with this increase there was increase in intellect symbolic manipulation learning capacity evolution and reason and as a corollary to the development and in the complexity of the brain hominins learned to use and manufacture tools and fire in addition to this there was another important trend and that was the modification in dentition and the associated diet teeth gradually reduced in size as the diet changed from wild fruits seeds fruits to flesh bone marrow and finally to cooked food an important evidence in the hominin evolution was seen that there was an increase in the consumption of seafood during the development and this is significant because seafood is rich in brain specific nutrients such as dha taurine and oligo elements finally as a result of these evolutionary trends specific traits appeared in humans prominent among this is the presence of a large brain bipedal locomotion a free forehand for better grouping and work small teeth and finally use of advanced tools in the course of evolution humans came way long way and became significantly different from their ancestors in posture mode of life cranium size jaws walking gait and communication skills now let us see some of the important fossils of our ancestors which have been discovered so far one of them is proleopithecus which is regarded as the ancestor of apes and man Egyptopithecus which exhibited ape like characters an important fossil is Triopithecus because it had a semi erect posture then we have Dromaeopithecus and Caniopithecus which were discovered and their bones which were recovered showed that they probably could walk upright another fossil which was important is Sahelanthropus which is close to the common ancestor of chimpanzees and humans as we see the early hominins one of the important member is ardipithecus which lived from about 7 to 4.54 million years ago in africa it had a small brain and was slightly smaller than a chimpanzee it had bipedal locomotion but we have to remember that they have longer forelimbs than hind limbs which indicate that they were still arboreal in nature the fossil skeleton of ardipithecus was discovered in ethiopia in 1994 australopithecines among them australopithecus which lived from about 4.1 to 1.1 million years ago in africa australopithecus is very important because it had a combination of ape and human like features it had bipedal locomotion and an important feature in australopithecus is that the grasping feet which is present in our 
earlier ancestors was lost. This indicates that they become terrestrial bipedal in nature. Evidence of bipedalism is found in the form of fossilized footprints which were discovered in Tanzania. Finally, we come to members of genus Homo, which arose about 3 million years ago, and they were the first in the human lineage to migrate out of Africa. Till now, 20 species of Homo have been discovered. And one of the important features among them is that the increasing cranial capacity. We should know that the genus Homo was coined by Carolus Linnaeus. Now, members of Homo can be divided into two groups, the earlier or archaic humans and the modern human. In the adjacent chart, we can see that members or rather different species of Homo coexisted or lived simultaneously and they were overlapping in the time frame. Now let us see some of the important members of Homo. The first one is the handyman Homo habilis, which arose about 1.75 million years ago. It was the first to use tools, had a cranial capacity larger than the Australopithecus, and it is assumed that it was carnivorous and could hunt with crude tools. Homo ergaster or the workman, most of the fossils have been discovered in Africa, and now they are classified as Homo erectus as an African subspecies. They had a larger cranial capacity, used large stone tools, and the smaller teeth suggested probably they knew the use of fire and cooking. Next is Homo erectus, meaning the upright man, which appeared around 1.89 million years ago. And they were the first in the human lineage to migrate out of Africa. Their fossils have been found in Africa, Europe, China, Indonesia. They had a larger cranial capacity, were social, lived in tribes, in caves, and hunted large animals. It is to be noted that Homo erectus lived longer than any other species of Homo. Then we have the Heidelberg man, which lived around 300,000 years ago, and fossils have been found across Africa and Europe. They had a brain capacity of 1280 cc, worked in cooperative groups, and hunted large animals using stone tools. Their teeth were smaller than the earlier species, but larger than modern humans. Another group which was discovered recently is Homo floriensis, or the Hobbit Man. The fossils have been found in an island of Flores in Indonesia and hence the name. They are the smallest species of Homo discovered so far with a small cranial capacity. However, they had large teeth and no chin like other ancestors or uh, other groups of Homo. Another important thing to be noted here is that the tools which were discovered, uh, discovered around the Hobbit man indicated that probably they were using fire. Next, we have the Neanderthal man, which a cranial capacity much higher, about 1750 cc, and they were heavy hominis, thick built, and larger than modern Homo sapiens. Their fossils were first discovered in the Neander Valley of Germany, and they also did not have a chin. And evidences suggest that probably they were capable of speech. However, the speech was high pitched and nasal. It is believed till now that Homo neanderthalensis was not in the direct lineage of Homo sapiens. However, it has been proved that. 
Homo neanderthalensis or the Neanderthal man interbred with members of early Homo sapiens and as a result of which some scholars suggest that they should be regarded as a subspecies of Homo sapiens and not as a separate species. Finally, we come to Homo sapiens or the wise man, which has a cranial capacity of 1400 cc, a rounded cranium, and a pronounced chin, which is a hallmark of the cranial structure of Homo sapiens. They had small front teeth, which indicated that they ate the food of choice. Homo sapiens, early Homo sapiens were more present in Africa, but along their line, Cro Magnon man was flourishing in parts of Europe, and their fossils have been recovered from France, Spain, Germany, and Central Europe. It is assumed to have lived from about 40,000 years ago, and they were anatomically identical to modern humans. However, intelligent wise, it is assumed that Homo sapiens, modern sapiens, that is the modern man, were smarter than them. Although they had developed culture, good finely crafted stone and bone tools were being used. Finally, we find the Homo sapiens sapiens or the modern man, which arose in Africa migrated to Europe and established itself across the different parts of the globe. Evolution of the modern man is more marked by an increase in intelligence and cultural evolution. We have to remember here that Homo sapiens sapiens is the only surviving species of Homo genus. Two skulls, Homo 1 and Homo 2, which have been discovered are till now the oldest specimen of the modern man and they have been dated to be about 195,000 years old. Now as we are coming to the end of our discussion on homo evolution rather evolution of man let us have a quick recapitulation with the help of the geological time scale. As we all know, the Cenozoic era is the age of mammals and hominoid radiation took place largely during the Miocene epoch, towards the end of which hominins began to appear. Hominins evolved in Pliocene and as the Pliocene epoch came to a close and the global climate was shifting to be cooler, the genus Homo evolved. Our evolutionary path takes us through Pliocene, Pleistocene, and finally into the Holocene, starting about 12,000 years ago, where we have established ourselves on Earth. Many scientists are of the opinion that with the rise of the human population or Homo sapiens to an unprecedented level where Homo sapiens are not only influencing other creatures, but they are at a stage to manipulate their own habitat. It is time for a new geological epoch called the Anthropocene, which would follow the Holocene. However, there is no general consensus as to when or what is the exact time to start the Anthropocene. Until that time comes, let us stop our discussion on human evolution here. These are the suggested reading and references I have used. I'd like to thank Manitip Sar and Jessica Sar for their inspiration and patience. Thank you very much. For any queries, do write back to me at afifakosar at gmail.com.